Hey guys, Prepared Survivalist here. Alright, I'm going to do a video on how to make a coon skin cap. And starting off, you're going to need a tanned raccoon hide. Technically, this could work with something like a fox or even a coyote. But I got a raccoon here since that's typically the most common hat that you're going to make with these. I've already cut out the pieces here and it's tanned and everything. I'm gonna skip through some of the steps so it's as short of a video as possible. So I've already got it cut out. And I've got a diagram here. And this is a drawing of the cuts that you're gonna need to make and the measurements. Okay, so this, let's say this is the full raccoon hide here. You're obviously going to be cutting it from the leather side or the underside of the skin. And when you cut it, you're going to use a razor blade or a sharp knife. You're not going to use scissors because you don't want to cut the edge of the fur. You just want to cut the hide. So you got to be careful when cutting that out. You want to leave this overhang because that covers the seams. So that's important when cutting the hide. And you basically just need four cuts or four pieces, which you can see right here. Okay, so the first one is going to be on the head. And I have it labeled here number one. And the dotted line is kind of where the cuts go, minus this dotted line here. And I'll explain that. So when you do the head piece, you're going to make a 7 inch circle and you're going to want to cut cut a pattern for that. So just cut a 7 inch diameter circle. Okay. What you'll do then is you'll place that circle right here. See this is the head. So you place it behind the ears. So that it lines up right behind the ears. Okay. Right in line with the head. Fit right back here. Um, maybe make it come back about an inch off the ears. If you go right up on there, that'll be a little too high. But but right behind the ears, basically. Because the idea is that this is going to be the top, and then the head will fold down over the front, so it'll kind of look like that from the side. So you do the 7-inch circle, about an inch behind the ears, and then only half of the circle will show on the bottom and then you just cut straight and that cut will kind of align with the natural form of the head so it'll look kind of like a, a torpedo type shape I guess as it tapers to the nose and everything and then you can kind of just trim around the edges cut the bottom lip off get a nice smooth edge and that'll give you your head cut. Okay, then you need your side cuts. And this is kind of going to depend on the size of your head. I did it about 11.5 inches on the top, 13 inches on the bottom, and then 5 inches high or thick, however you want to look at that. Now, on this cut, it's not perfect rectangles. These are more like trapezoids. They're angled on the side. So the top section is shorter than the bottom section and it's equal. So it's 13 inches here, 11.5 inches on the top, but you got to center that because it comes off three quarters of an inch on each side. Okay, so don't don't do one side straight and then have your inch and a half on the other make sure it's spaced evenly so it'll give you a nice trapezoid and the reason for that is this is the side of the head this will basically wrap around your head okay and this these two together represent the circumference of your head now the reason that you don't want it just perfect rectangles is because that'll give it more of a bucket shape if you did it that way and it'll just, imagine putting a bucket over your head, it'll just fall down over your head. If you taper it, that'll contour to the 
natural contours of your head as it slopes forward at the back of your head and your forehead and it'll help to kind of cradle around your head better so that's why you're going to want to put these angles in it so make sure to do that and um, like I said mine's an approximation when you sew it together you can take it in a little more like if you do the first if you, if you sew it first it's too too uh, loose take you can sew it in put another layer of stitches and just take it in that way it's not a not a big deal or you can be real concise and measure exactly how you want but generally stick with those proportions and you'll get a a nice uh, a nice fit um, another thing you may not want just this raw leather exposed to your head I have Neats foot oil on here so I mean if, and if you're sweating and everything under there you may not want that so you'll either want to wear a like a beanie cap underneath that in which case you'll want this to be a little uh, bigger than normal or you can even put an inner liner on there I'm probably gonna just leave it without an inner liner um, that's also good um, to not have an inner liner because if it if you do and you sweat or it gets funky you can't really wash it I guess you could dry clean it but if you just wear a hat and you stick this over it then um, you don't have to worry about the inner liner getting dirty and it being sewn in there and you can't get it out so you do two of those cuts you can see on my diagram and by the way you can pause this and write all this down or print it out or whatever you want to do so you got the side cuts times two you need two of those so the head the two side cuts and then the tail the tail is super easy because you're just cutting off the tail the only thing is is um, I left about two inches of the uh, rump fur on there so the tail itself would probably be about there down give yourself a little extra that is if you want but then that'll kind of give you something to sew into so that um, you have a longer tail hanging down especially if, if it's a shorter coon tail and you, you may, you may want to give yourself a little extra so uh, generally when you cut these pieces out you should have plenty you can see here cut the head the next will be the side pieces and then at the bottom you have enough for the tail and you'll have the feet left over as scrap okay so we'll take a look at those like this and that's how the first side will look all right and um, when you're making it, you want the part of the fur that hangs down uh, or the bigger side, the longer side, to be on the bottom. And that'll be true for each of these because this is this is the back far as on the animal and then this is more on the belly side you'll see it's more gray so you want to make sure that each of these cuts line up you don't want it backwards like this because that'll look all wrong have gray here on this half and then gray up there so make sure that you do the cuts to where they match each side of the fur so like here the trapezoid, the long half, will be in the middle for each one. Then they taper down to the shorter half for the belly side. That's important. So, I mean, it's not too complicated on these cuts. You just have to be cognizant of the important parts. The tail's pretty much idiot proof. The head, you know, all I gotta do is just place that circle an inch behind the ear. You're good to go there. And then the sides, you just have to make the trapezoidal cut, make sure the fur runs the right way, and you're good to go on that. 
All right, so we'll then uh, move on from here to construction. All right, here's what we got going on as far as our sewing goes. I'm using a sail needle and some cotton hand quilting thread. This thread's pretty stiff, a little bit thicker and stronger than normal thread because you are going through leather here. So I, I started it. I used these alligator clips just to, to hold the pieces together. So we've got these two sides flush with each other. Remember you sew inside out. And we're just going about a quarter inch from the edge. Making sure we get a nice clean puncture through there. Thread's doubled up, make sure it pulls through without getting snagged. And then when you have that loop, before you tighten it, you go back through like that. Just pull it taut and then do it again. Be careful because that will get snagged on anything. And one thing you can do is to prevent runs if you get the thread to break or to pull through, is periodically just knot it. This is all on the inside, so nothing has to be pretty as far as this goes. So you just basically go back through the thread a couple times to the previous stitch, make a knot. So what will happen is if you start to get a run here, once it hits the knot, it's done. The next section is then protected from the threads unraveling itself. So you can kind of do that to prevent it from from splitting and just coming completely undone so I'll uh, keep going on this and then we'll pick up on the next uh, all right so we have both sides sewn together that gives us one continuous loop of material that's the headband of the hat remember the wider part because it's trapezoidal shaped is at the bottom and then the top of our hat we'll then have to put the head part which is this it'll basically go like that we'll tuck in all this fur so we're just sewing leather on leather because we want as much fur on the fur side as possible. We don't want it coming through. That's why these seams don't have any fur on the inside. Because it would be just a waste. Now, when you sew the top, you don't sew it all the way around. You do about three quarters or less, maybe two thirds. And you just sew it to about here. We'll then taper that in once we get to that part. And then it'll just fold down over the front, kind of like so. And then we'll put a stitch through his nose and then stitch it to the, the bottom. So it'll be like this. So we're working on getting that top part sewn on. And then we'll All right, we've it. sewn the top on about two thirds of the way all the way around the back it will come to a T right there you want to make sure that junction's real strong I'll probably actually have to go back and put some more stitches in there and then you'll have kind of an opening and then you'll feed the head through like that alright and then what we can do 
it's careful because we don't want to rip anything. We'll turn it all inside, or right side in, I should say. This is where you'll see that it really starts to come together. And that can all be combed and pulled out, evened out later on. So that's pretty much the, sh the shell of it. And then uh, the front will come over like that. And we'll attach that. See that's our our front seam. There's the inside, there's the front seam, and the nose should go right at the base of the seam there. You'll sew it in like that. Okay, and um, what I'll do here is you can kind of see how you see the the white from the leather on the side. To make it a little more aesthetically pleasing and to, to make it fit more in the shape of your head, you just fold these edges in like that, okay? And then basically what we're going to have to do is run some thread and probably just tie it to the inside of the ear. So you'll have a piece of thread going like this and like that. And it's just going to pull these, these edges in. It's going to kind of round that out and it's going to curl it and kind of hide the, the rough edges. And then it'll look like that from the side. So we'll uh, do that next. So those together and then just put a stitch here. And I may even go ahead and just do the tail because the tail is real simple. You um, you can actually, if you want, just kind of overlap it a little bit. You don't have to actually do it like this. Eh, maybe I will do it like that. So we'll just sew the tail like that. And that's how it'll look. Blends in perfectly. Alright, so I think the next update we should be completed. Alright, here's the finished hat. give you a view of it on the side tail just hangs down took a couple brushes fine one and a regular one just to get the hair smoothed out Makes it look a lot better. It'll blend in the, the seams and the edges a lot better too. The uh, head portion, it was a little stiff. The hide was just really thick. It was kind of hard for me to thin out. So it, it's still pretty stiff. Um, and I kind of left it that way intentionally because I wanted 
it to be the the sides they're real uh, malleable and soft so I wanted some stiffness and rigidity to it to hold the shape so it didn't just collapse but um, it kind of is putting a little bit of a ripple in the head a little bit but I'll, I can work that in and, and fix that I may even sew it down So it kind of fits flush like this, although I, I kind of want to avoid doing that because I don't want to just sew right into the middle of the fur. But it fits uh, fits pretty good. I could I have enough room that I could put a a beanie on under it if I needed to. It comes right down to my eye level, so you get maximum forehead coverage. Uh, it'll pretty much cover your ears the but that your ear holes will still be like right under the edge of the hat so if you're hunting or something you could still hear but the hair itself kind of hangs down over it so your ears would be mostly covered that tail's nice because the fat parts right on the back of your neck so if you had a wind blowing it would cover the back of your neck it's not just ornamental uh, one thing to note is right here, it's uh, open. It's not completely closed. Um, it, the, way, the way the fur folds in there, you're, it's still totally covering your head. It's not like there's a hole where you could feel uh, air come through that much. You will get a little bit of a, a little bit of a draft in there. The wind blows really hard. But one thing that's nice about that is it's uh, ventilation, so it's it's breathable. Because otherwise, I mean, even cotton hats they breathe. Something like this, it wouldn't breathe at all if it was completely sealed. So there's nothing wrong with having that open. Um, it's not really meant to be waterproof or anything. But I have a feeling this would shed water pretty good. Put some Neat's foot oil on it, so the leather should be fairly water resistant but you want to try to keep it out of water snow would be okay just wouldn't want it to rain on you I don't think might stiffen the leather up a little bit so we'll uh, take you to another view here You can see how the top fits on there. And that'll eventually kind of flatten down. There's a little bit of a black rim or edge. Um, what's nice about this back seam, that blended perfect. You can't even tell there's a seam there. Even with the tail, it just blends right in. So that looks perfect. You really don't see the seams at all. On the face, I took a Sharpie Rub-A-Dub, which is a Sharpie specifically meant for fabric, so it won't wash off. And I went around the eyes, because there's a little bit of white coming through from the hide on the eyes. And then I, I did the edge of where the lips were to simulate lips, because I did cut those off. There's a little blemish there, kind of a hole by its nose, but not much you can do about that. You can just do little things to touch that up, just to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. And you can see there how that part's open. I kind of sewed it to taper it a little bit, so that it'll, when it's inside, that pulls in more and kind of just rests against your forehead. That uh, looks pretty good, pretty clean. And there it is. And that's how you make a coonskin cap. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.